everybody. I'm doing a little bit of a different episode today. Instead of being in my den over Skype or in my den with uh, with a guest, I'm actually out in the world at a really awesome, I'm looking at an amazing playground. And as you can hear, there's some city noise in back and that is all right. And I'm here with the director of this amazing nursery school. And I'm here because because the director and the, the staff have decided to make a change. They've, they've changed something significant about this playground, and we are going to hear all about that today. So please welcome Tanya Trainer of Miss Tanya's Nursery School. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm super excited that we got to we do this. We always love visitors, so yeah. we're thrilled you came. Good, good, good. And we are looking at this playground and what so describe what it used to look like before it looked like what it looks like now so it used to we've been here 25 years actually celebrating our 25th anniversary this year and when we started our playground we started with a rainbow jungle gym system <clears throat> which meant we had the climber we had the slide uh, we had the rope um, ladder and um the rings and we had two ways of accessing the playground and underneath actually underneath the playground system we had a tire swing and then we had some trucks and some shovels and some buckets mm -hmm. um, so fairly t like a fairly a typical, typical kind of yes. what yeah. you might see in a nursery school or a school or whatever yes with a fairly like the climber is a fairly big thing right it's it's big and expen would you say it's big and expensive I would say it's big and expensive yes <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and did you change the playground because of the, was it money or was it something else? It's something else. The, um, we like to be moving forward and we like change at Miss Tanya's. And so when we were looking at our playground and actually our licensor came out and had new um, regulations about fall zones, which were getting to be a little bit ridiculous. Okay, I hope, stop right there. What's a fall zone? A fall zone is the area around each piece of equipment that is off the ground more than 32 inches. So if you have a platform off the ground 36 inches, for instance, you might need six feet around that piece of equipment for the children to theoretically fall. Okay. All right. Before they could, so that they don't hit their heads on anything else. Correct. That kind of thing. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Yep. So we decided to reimagine, which is what we called it, our playground totally. And I think that philosophically over time, as I said, this is my 25th year with this nursery school. Um, we've been going in a different direction and thinking about children's play differently and what can be more natural. We have a lot of plastic in our world. We have a lot of pre-made toys. We have a lot of um, things that need batteries and need to be plugged in and recharged. And we were thinking about what we could offer them here at the nursery school that might be different than what they have in their backyard or in their playroom at home. I love it. I love it. Because everything is, it's so, it, life is so full of batteries now. It really is. <laughs> and when those things don't work, children become very unhappy. Yeah. Or even, even if they do work, <clears throat> I mean, what are they doing? They're pressing a button and right. then they're pressing it again or they're pressing another button or whatever. There's not really a lot of social interaction there. You're right. And the beauty of loose parts is that um, and the items you offer the children can do a multitude of, of things. I'm going to use in quotation marks. So you can use a um, set of bricks. We have... Um, real bricks here as you'd build your walkway at your house and one year one day they can be a wall and 20 minutes later it can be a walkway and then it can become a bridge and um, then it can be a diving board and all of those things can become a whole bunch of different different ways of using the materials so I'm not telling a child and they're not feeling that this is the one way to use something and so it's called a loose parts playground it's called loose parts, yes, because we have lots of loose parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so I guess ironically for, enough, <laughs> for listeners, there's no. I mean, there's a there's a small slide. There's maybe a couple of, of small slides. There's some yep. some smaller equipment that you would think of as like typical gross motor. Yes, but for the most part, it is. It's really. It's, it is a bunch of loose parts. I mean, I'm seeing the bricks, there's boards, there's logs, there's this really, you know, kids have taken and made like a sort of teepee over in one corner. There's like mesh netting over what appear to be plants. There's these two orange uh, tubes that you could climb into or over or under <laughs> if you're small enough. There's, there's just, there's like shovels and there's, there's this awesome table full of mud pies and like all these different, there's just, I don't know, five, ten different kinds of mud pies up on that one table and and it's just I mean it, it looks there aren't any children out here right now and 
it, it just kind of looks like a bunch of stuff. But, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just, it's, it's actually, I mean, there's plants, it's beautiful. Um, there's this really nice fence that, you know, keeps kids safe. And there's like a, there's a shaded area. There's a rowboat in the middle of, <laughs> of it. Because we might need to go to sea, you yeah, never know. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, I mean, what I see, and I'm sure this is what you see, Miss Tanya, is the possibilities that, that can be done and that can be had on this playground are, are like endless. <clears throat> That's Bless correct. You. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I wonder, could you describe kind of the, what, what, I guess maybe what first had, when you first decided to do this and you took out the old equipment, was it during the same kind of school year or, or do you, do you run on a school year? We do run on a school year. We do run a summer program, usually eight weeks and two mm-hmm. week sessions throughout the summer. We're closed for a few weeks in August to do our big reimaginings and painting and mm-hmm. things like that. I love that phrase, reimagining. <clears throat> yes. And, um, but we did take the playground out when the children were here because we wanted to see what, what their thoughts were and talk with them about it. Oh, I love this. <laughs> As opposed to, you know, ta-da, look like what surprise. we did. Yes. Yeah. And that's, you know, children and surprises can go both ways. And our children are really invested here at Miss Tanya's, and I don't think I would do that with them as just spring something like that. So we talked about it, and then we talked about what we might want to add to the playground, and we started slowly. Um and again, just to actually, I should ask, how old are the kids here? Three, four, and five years old. Okay, okay. So that, I mean, that's that's a time when kids do not get to have a lot of say in what what physical structures are around them, right? That's correct. And I think that's one of the reasons that Loose Parts is so popular with children, because no one is telling them what it needs to be, what it needs to look like, what the what the result, in quotation marks, again, needs to be of what, yeah. they're, what they're playing with. Yeah. And I, I mean, even at the beginning, you're <clears throat> saying to them, hey... You know, well, what did you say to them, actually? We said, um, we're going to take down the climber and we're going to do something cool with the playground. What do you think we should do? <laughs> <laughs> and what did they say? Um, they said blocks <clears throat> because we have tons of blocks inside and building, of course, is natural for children. Mm-hmm. Um, and from the blocks, we started with um, some firewood which they um, immediately started building campfires with. Mm-hmm. And then we brought in <clears throat> some um, stumps. And we sort of added things over time. So with the stumps became something to roll down the hill. It became something to sit or stand on. Um, And then they started to put the um, firewood together with the stumps. And then it became um, an area to sit around the campfire. Mm -hmm. We added some sticks and birch branches. um, And those became um, a whole multitude of things. And then we started adding... Um, siding, wood siding, pine boards, yeah. um, two by fours, um, slats from um, from um, building, from wall building, um, concrete um, squares. And what was really neat is as we, as we added things, I brought it in my car and I would pull up in the driveway next to the playground and I would have the children come out and unload it. Um, oh, awesome. And then, of course, that they can't come with me to get the materials, but that adds to the excitement. Um, and, the, and the ownership of bringing the materials onto the playground. And every time I brought something, I'd come back a few days later. I do have three nursery schools, so I visit, um, you know, I'm a, each one each day. Yeah. And I'd come back and check in, and I'd say, so what do you think? We need more. <laughs> and i say, well, more of what? Well, more bricks. And I'd say, well, how many more? A hundred. <laughs> so no matter what I brought, they wanted a hundred more of it. <laughs> And how, so how many, like I can see that there, I can see the slats of siding and I can see some of the bricks and stuff like that. What, for each of these elements, like the, the cement, the bricks, the wood slats, how, how many would you say that there actually are out here? Um, probably, I'm going to say we probably have, I think I have 50 concrete, um, what you might build a walkway with at the back of your house or a patio. Okay, yeah. Um, and it is important that we have heavy things as well, so the stumps are good. Um, some children really need that heavy lifting work, so that's mm-hmm. an option for them. And we probably have 75 bricks. I took up a little wooden patio at my house, um, a pieces that interlock, mm-hmm. and we have about 30 of those, and I brought those <laughs> in, and those are very popular. Um, gutters are extremely popular. Um, Oh, I bet they would be see, with all like running water yes, down them so, and stuff. And that, that's what I was going to get to next, Karen, is that we do offer running water in all of our playgrounds. And running water is amazing. You add raw water to their play and the play just expands incredibly. They started, um, so what we did here at this school, every school is a little bit different, but here we have the water coming through the hose and down a big long gutter. Mm-hmm. And the children didn't like the angle of the gutter, so they added, I'm looking at it, they added a stump 
underneath it <laughs> to bring it out a little further. Yeah. Someone else saw that the hose was dripping and added a sink. We have a sink base over there. Oh, um, that is so, so they cool. added the sink to catch the extra water so that they can then dip into it and pull the water out, which is really cool. Oh, then wow. became moats, damming, um, bridges. And the most important thing about loose parts um, in a playground or inside is the requirement for social and and social conversation and language. This can't be done. This is not an individual activity. You, You might see a child doing something, starting something on their own, but immediately someone else is going to come over and be engaged and want to take Mm -hmm. part in it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the conversation, the language, the requirement for sharing and taking turns and, um, and talking things over and coming up with plans sometimes, particularly for the older children, is key. They will plan out these really complicated things that they're going to do with the water as it's flowing and where they want it to go and why they want it to go there. Um, just so very different wow. than climbing up onto a climber and sliding down yeah. the slide. Yeah, which, you, which is very individual. You wait in line. Yes. You have to wait in line to, you know, to, to get onto the climber or onto the slide in the first place, and then you go down it, and it's over, and then yes. you maybe you get up and you go around and do it again. But there's yes. not a lot of, n- you know, necessary interaction there. Exactly. So I have, I have so many questions. I have like a million questions, but I'm going to start <laughs> with, I feel like I want to I pick up on the social piece later, because first I, my first question is, do any parents or did you like how do you address safety I guess I mean you, I hear about so thinking from the perspective of I was a very worried when my, my kids are 15 and 11 and and as they've especially after I had a second one you know you can't keep track of that second one or, or any later <laughs> ones as closely as you can with the first mm-hmm. but the first one was really kept very how can we say this we we hardly let him do anything because everything <laughs> scared us. I mean, like it it took so much for me to allow him to learn how to crawl upstairs, you know, or whatever. And I I think I'm not alone in that. I think a lot of parents are like, oh my gosh, we can't let him touch anything. We can't let her get hurt. So do you? I mean, do you get splinters? Do you get dro- it, things it remind, dropped on it kids? It reminds or? me of a story, Karen. I had a mother, Angela, 23 years ago. She had three adorable little girls with ponytails, and she came in one day and said. Brooke says there's scissors in the classroom. <laughs> and I said, Angela, don't you have scissors? No, they're dangerous. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so that how brings do you... to mind that story. Yeah, I mean, um, how do you learn how to use scissors if you don't ever have scissors? Yes, right? and I grew up on a farm, um, and we had a very easy, laid-back kind of lifestyle. There were very few um, rules. You came in when the bell rang. You drank out of the faucet outside, so you weren't constantly banging the screen door. Mm -hmm. And I know that that helped me be very comfortable with this. And um, so when we started the whole loose parts movement and our reimagination, we engaged parents and we sent out emails and said, this is what we're thinking of. And we cut out pictures from magazines that we liked and found things on the Internet um, as teachers. And we talked with the children. What do you think of this? And how could we build it? And what do you think of that? And what do you think you might do with this? And we sort of engaged the parents and brought them on board as we did as we went along with the process. And um, children come home wet, muddy, sandy, with mulch in their hair, <laughs> and parents absolutely love it. Yeah. And I think it's because they don't they are uncomfortable offering these opportunities at home. That's true. To their That's children. True. Yeah. They yeah. don't want it in their house, or they don't want the yard to be messy, which is perfectly fine um, but that's why you send them to school so yeah. they can have a different kind of experience yeah. than they might at home and I when I think about that from my own from what my kids childhood what I did a lot was I I knew about things like cornstarch and water <coughs> from goop. from being a preschool teacher <laughs> goop yeah sometimes yes. we call it oobleck mm-hmm. I knew about uh you know suds in the sink and and stirring you know giving them different pouring implements or whatever I knew about like sand and just the these kind of like they don't cost a lot but they're just these opportunities to sit and to you know tip for your child to really become engaged in a way that that you don't let them often and um it didn't bother me at all that I had kids with like in fact I loved it when we would put food coloring into the goop and they would end up with like green hands or something I love I was like this means that we've you know we don't do this around we had fun yeah exactly we don't do this when we have like a wedding to be in or something but but any other time is fine or or paper mache so many so many people parents are like oh I'm just afraid to like get this stuff on you know in my carpet or something like that and and so as a preschool teacher I was very comfortable with those kinds of things but I was very much like oh I don't you know if you use a hammer you could get hurt (laughs) (laughs) and so to see this it just must be 
it must be revelatory for parents to know that there's a place where their kids can go, where they can they can just get into all this stuff. Don't put them in their best clothes to go to preschool. Yes, we recommend the consignment shop. Yeah, yeah, yes. yep. 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 And uh, and then and then you've got now you've got kids having having fun together. So to get back into the social piece, I think my first question is, what do you ever get kids who say, "Listen, I just want to do this on my own," or or is it generally like kids are like, "Yay, come and join me." It's, it can be both. You will see children start to explore on their own, particularly when they're three. They need a little bit of space. Um, you know, they're more parallel players, mm-hmm. so they may be more likely to go over to the water and maybe for a day watch it flow. Mm-hmm. And then maybe the next day they take some stones and they put it into the, the gutter and watch the water flow around it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then maybe the third day a friend comes up and says, can I add some stones to the gutter as the water's flowing through? And then um, they become engaged. And, you know, let's face it, children need downtime. We have a, we mm-hmm. have a swing, a wooden swing um, that fits five, I must say. <laughs> or <laughs> two not, adults. Two adults or five children, <laughs> five I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. And we encourage piling in. We don't have rules about numbers. Oh, <laughs> if yay. you can fit, you can sit. Yeah. Um, so there are opportunities for the children to be on their own. But for the most part, um, the children tend to want to work together and be together and socialize mm-hmm. um, I bet they don't even th- I mean children don't even think of it this way as oh I'm not. socializing <laughs> what not. they're thinking Thank is goodness. like hey grab that brick and put it here yes. so that we can we can make this structure yes and one might be thinking I need some worker bees yeah <laughs> let yep. me go round up some children who I can see if I can get them to do what I want them to do it must be a great way for kids to sometimes be the boss but sometimes mm-hmm. be like not the boss. You know, everybody wants to be the boss all the yes. time. And I think in a situation like this, you must get a lot of kids who are like, all right, I'll do that because this is this is a project I got to be a part of. <laughs> yes, because they find it interesting. And for the most part, I find with negotiation, which they're really good at, if the teachers step back and, and stop talking to them, mm-hmm. they're really good at negotiation and they can work it out themselves. Um, and everyone has something to offer. And absolutely, most children, not all, but many would like to be the leader. Um, but also find um, satisfaction in being the follower when the result is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, what's the what are some of the like most jaw dropping things that you've that you've seen either created or that you've seen interactions between kids since you've uh, you know implemented this? Well, kind of certainly program? the language, um, the increase in language in the playground is huge, and I don't mean language as in we're all waiting in line to use the slide or the rings or get onto the tire swing, and only so many are allowed or can fit. Um, because that's pushing and shoving in my turn. Mm -hmm. Um, This is language as in, um, look, the water, it's flowing. Um, it's, uh, it dis- the, well, I put water in it, but then it melted. And someone else will say, no, it disintegrated. No, disintegrated <laughs> means it's gone. It's still there. You just can't see it. And then another child, I, I, what do you mean? There's no water, but there was. And then another child, it ev- it, I think it evaporated. So all these big words that we use on a daily basis with them become real when they're yeah, using them on the playground together. Yeah, when they together. can see them like that. Yes. Yep, yep. So definitely language. And, you know, I, I, I visited schools um, and, D- Johnny, stop. Johnny, don't do that. S- Steven, come over, come over here. We, there's none of that. There are no discipline issues. There's no redirecting is very rare. Yep. Um, so there's I, so I, many materials that that's just not needed. I do want to... Uh, it just interrupt and end. Talk about redirect. I'd love to ask you to talk about redirecting because I think that this is a skill that that can be learned and really kind of <laughs> has to be learned by anybody with kids under you know eight. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's kind of funny because the five year olds will redirect the three year olds. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Which is wonderful. And we do have a multi-age playground. Um, so when they come out, we do have three, four, and five-year-olds all playing together. Wow. Um, the five-year-olds learn just as much from the three-year-olds as the three-year-olds learn from the five-year-olds. I know when people come to visit, they think that the five-year-olds are the ones, you know, telling the three-year-olds what to do. But it's a, it's definitely a shared learning experience. Wow. Um, all redirection is is... Um, if something's going on that needs a little tweak, you'll say, hey, come on over here. I've got a, a four-pound um, bowl, and it needs filling up, or I've got some mm-hmm. sand. I need some water. Can mm-hmm. you go fill up the pitcher for me? Oh, look over here. Did you see these bricks? These are these bricks over here. Do you want to help me build? That's redirection. So I recently did a show called How to Make No Sound Like Yes, <laughs> and I feel like, I mean, that's, a, that's such a ninja tactic, but I, I feel like redirection is a way of doing that too it, it, you're not saying stop uh i don't know throwing sand you're saying hey can you can you 
grab the shovel for me and fill this thing up. You know, you're, you're, you're saying yes to this other thing while you're yes. subtly not saying no <laughs> yes. to that, to that thing. And so, yes. sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> um, I was going to say, you, you're saying that there isn't a lot even of redirection out here. There really isn't. Very little. Um, and I, I think that's the thing that has shocked the teachers the most. Sometimes when you, um, or we found that when we brought in more and more, more and more materials, the teachers became more and more nervous about the number of items out here and what that was going to look like and what it was going to feel like when the children came out to play. Mm-hmm. And they have been just thrilled by the results. Um, And just they can't say enough about how the change in this playground has been for the better. Wow. And I wish I did it 20 years ago. And it must be a lot less expensive, whether that's why you did it or not, right? No, it's certainly not why I did it. I was just talking to a teacher at the other school, and I said, rarely do I do things for money. And she (laughs) said, we know. (laughs) Um, No, it's certainly not about the money. It was about allowing more children to participate in the activities. And when you have a climber, one child can be on the slide, and one can be on the ladder, and one can be on the overhead rings, and that's three children right there. Mm -hmm. And if you have more than three, someone's waiting. Everybody else is waiting. Yes. Kids aren't good at waiting. And they do, and they have to wait. They go to gymnastics where they have to wait. They go to... Um, you know, maybe a reading specialist that they have to wait. Mm-hmm. They go to Kung Fu, they have to wait. Mm-hmm. They're very involved and very engaged. After they leave here, I wanted them the opportunity to be free and not have to worry. I have 40 shovels. So there's one for wow. every single child plus a few teachers when you come out to play. Oh, I and so that. that's just not an issue. And it really is. I've been thinking about this a lot. I just spoke to a play specialist named Janine Holleran. Uh, and and I just spoke to a dad who um, who has like an hour of family time a day <laughs> because that's how busy their lives are. He hey, runs a business. I, I would and take an hour. I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> mean, divided attention. That's we, awesome. <laughs> a lot of our conversations are about like open ended play. Yes. And, and how do you get the time when you're a parent? Right. How do you get that time to uh, this dad told an incredible story that I absolutely love. Uh, Steve Mirando. I think it's episode 30 talked about there's this one day when he was watching his four and a half year old who was outside playing and his four and a half year old was in one of the shrubs in their backyard (laughs) and he was literally trying to grab every branch of this shrub and get it get them all into his arms and so (laughs) my friend Steve goes out and he says hey what are you doing buddy (laughs) and his son says I'm trying to stop the wind like these are the kinds of big ideas that if you just if you just let a kid loose, mm-hmm. especially with other kids, but also alone sometimes, mm-hmm. if you let them loose into this world in a safe way that is that has a lot to engage them, they they bring up these ideas. And I, I keep talking about this too. Einstein found the theory of relativity, figured <laughs> out the theory of relativity. Do you do you know this story? No, Tanya? no, but I know where you're headed. He, but <laughs> yeah, he. Um, he imagined he was daydreaming one day and he imagined what would it be like to sit on a point of light as it moves through space. And that's why we have the theory of relativity. Hmm. It wasn't because he was waiting in line at a slide. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes, exactly. I mean, these things are so, so important. So this idea of open-ended play. Yes, is key. Yeah, you're really giving them a chance to just spend a certain amount of time in a space well, I bet they'd spend all day out here if they, they could. They would, yes. Yeah. Did you and, have to- and in the summer, we do spend all day out here. Yeah. And during the nice weather, we, we come out 45 minutes year-round yep. because we sled down our hill here in the winter. <laughs> um, so we are out year-round, but um, we do spend quite a bit of time out here. And frankly, I think children should be outdoors as much as possible. Yeah, and yeah. And that is our philosophy. I, I agree. I agree. And In I mean, nature. Yep. In nature, in, in all kinds of weather. I mean... You know, I think there are regulations about things like thunderstorms and stuff like that. But one of my favorite things as a parent has been watching my kids swim in the rain. Yes. It's just they're like, I'm wet already. Why not? And and it's you can there. Everybody's smiling even bigger because yes. wait, 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 I'm in the rain in the water. You know, I think it's, what they can learn from that. Yeah. That yep. they might not have. I was thinking when you were saying that about the water, we had a child at my long meadow school who came in one day and said, I can't go in the water anymore because mom doesn't want me to ruin my shoes. And I said, hmm. What do you think we can do about that? And he looked at me and he said, I need rain boots. So we started a rain boot drive. And oh. so we had a huge line of about 20 pairs of rain boots. So children whose parents did not want their feet to get wet, they could change into the boots. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and, and then just, they could go into the water. <laughs> and if you think, I mean, like, think about the skills that are involved. I'm not thinking so much about the skills that are involved in thinking about that. But like, every kid has to learn how to 
whatever, put on socks and take yes, off their shoes. Problem solve. And problem solve. Yep, yes. yep, exactly. And it, and it, you, their best time to do that is not when you are late for a doctor's Absolutely appointment. Not. It's 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 when they're super motivated. Yes. They can't live without this. They've got yes. to get into this. I have to go in the puddle. Yep, yep, yep. Yes. I, and so I'm looking at the rowboat. It's like a full size rowboat. You could probably pit, <laughs> fit four adults into that rowboat. And I'm wondering, like, how does it? Or ten children. <laughs> yeah, or ten children. What are what are some of the more unique ways that the, just the rowboat gets played with? Does it get pulled around? It, it, it does get pulled around. Um, it is quite heavy. It is a real rowboat. Mm-hmm. Um, it's plastic. And it's eight feet long, and um, it does get pulled around, not very far. Um, and it's funny, when I first got the rowboat, they used it in very normal rowboat ways. Mm-hmm. We had some um, life jackets, and they put on their life jackets, <laughs> and they got some planks over there, and they came over, and those were oars. Now they use it more as a balancing tool. So they figured out that if they redirect the front of the rowboat, either down or up, it will tip side to side. Oh. And they figured out that when it's lengthwise to the hill, it only tips one way. Oh, I see. So now it's become a whole different tool um, for them. It's wow. not. It's, sometimes it's used as a rowboat, but frequently and mostly it's used to experiment with balance. That is wild. Yeah. <laughs> I, was in, I was envisioning like water, filling, you know, kids trying to fill it up with water or like after a big rainstorm or after we had, you probably had like six feet of snow out here last winter, right? We had I 11 mean, feet of snow in this bro last winter. 11 feet of mm-hmm. snow. <laughs> yes. We had lots of snow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo. Uh, I bet they couldn't find that robot <laughs> 11 feet of snow. But do, do they ever do things with water or does that take water into the rowboat? I yeah. haven't seen them do that. No. They certainly move water around the playground. And mm-hmm. um, we do have a little kitchen set up here and they'll bring it up here. We have a train, um, a wooden train here that we play on that my husband and son and I built mm-hmm. many years ago and it's very beloved. Mm-hmm. Um, so we certainly move water around, but I haven't seen them take it in the boat. Hmm. Um, it's more, They use it more for standing up. They stand up and they balance in it. Yeah, because it'll they, rock. Yeah, and they move it different yeah. ways and see how it's rocking. And they bring materials in it. They might fill it up with sand and then we'd say, I want wonder what we'll do next and they'll say I will dump it <laughs> okay, you better get your friends <laughs> what gave you the idea to bring the rowboat in like how did that happen I can't remember I think we were out sailing one day and I looked over and said I think I need a boat in each playground <laughs> and I'm a big Craigslister and I went on Craigslist and scared up three rowboats and each school has a rowboat oh this is so awesome yeah just a different kind of material. Again, something they're not going to have at their house. And if they did, it would be on wheels and not accessible for yeah, play. Yeah. And this is purely for play. And of course, that's what children are doing all day long if you let them is play. Yeah. And that's how they learn and that's how they grow and um, through play. We've got in our yard a, um, a, a utility trailer that my husband built. Fun. <laughs> and so like the, ba- the base of it is metal. Yeah, exactly. A clubhouse. So it's got my husband, we bought the utility trailer and it's, I think it's, it, it's just exactly the right size to fit a piece of drywall into. So eight feet. So eight feet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eight by four, I think. And um, he built these, these sides for it. And we probably we've had that since the kids were maybe 11 and seven, something like that. And, it's it's well it's safe it's well anchored in the yard like it's not going anywhere in terms of it's not going to start rolling or something like that but that would be but so fun they, oh yeah <laughs> wouldn't it <laughs> that would be pretty fun and what they the things that they do with it i mean it gets used for hide and seek yes. it gets used as parts of obstacle courses sometimes they'll just sit in there and have conversations if we ever have a party there's a, inevitably there's like four kids sort of, of perched on the, the rails and yes. and um and i think my husband and more than me, but but me too. We're a little bit like, oh, what if somebody falls? I mean, you know, you're, you're getting that vibe from me, right? That, that It was a good thing I was a preschool teacher because I think otherwise our kids would have never left the house. They would have been like, oh. But so even my husband was like, aha, look at that. That's awesome. They're yeah. up there. You know, they're, they're using it in that way. They're far up there sitting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's led, I think, to this place where like this past year, my husband and, and our now 11-year-old built a tree fort together. And it's Gort, my husband built it, and he's he's uh, a hobbyist, but a carpenter. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And, and my my son was able to say, well, you know, I really kind of want, I love these gun ports in front. And, and my and my little guy, my 11-year-old is out there with like a big nail gun and a, and a hammer and a screw, an automatic, you know, electric screwdriver. And just, I feel like what, what the kids are doing here in this playground now is going to 
inform like the rest of their lives. Don't don't you feel that way? I, I do think that way. And they just had something. Um, there was an article that we had read about um, children not having opportunities to um, act on their own, make their own decisions and, and fail. Um, as in the water didn't flow. What can I do differently? And that therefore the um, they were turning into adults who were unable to take risks and unwilling to put themselves out there and perhaps suggest something that might not work or something that might need to be reworked. Yeah, it's this idea of and failure. And that, that was a concern. Yeah. yeah. I'm reading a book right now uh, by a woman named Jessica Leahy, who's a teacher. She teaches like middle school to, I think, sort of fifth to eighth grade is her, sixth to eighth grade. And she's getting these kids in school now who everything is so... There's an end point in sight. There's a goal. There's mm-hmm. a, like, you got to do this so that you can get to that. Mm-hmm. Nothing, at least in, you know, in terms of school motivating kids to learn, there isn't a lot of, like, do this because it's interesting to you. Right. Or fun or, or to see right. what happens, to make a mistake. Exactly. And I, I feel like that is, I mean, her book is so, it's telling it like it is. It's, a, it's such a huge problem because what you do, you end up with adults who don't, who are like afraid to yes. fail. They're afraid yeah. to take any kind of risk. And I feel like the way the antidote to that is to just, is to do exactly what you're doing. Right. And you need to, the children need to fail over and over and over again in order to feel good about themselves and know that they can carry on and that they can get a different result. Yeah. And when I say fail, again, I mean that the water is not flowing around the rock because it's too darn big. So what are we going to do? We need to rechannel the flow of the water. We need to widen the canal. We need to build something around it yeah. um, in order to solve the problem yeah. and, not, and not give up. You know, yeah. I don't, we don't want to give her uppers. Yeah. Yeah. We want, I call it stick to itness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it isn't about, it isn't about like, it's not about the result. No. In loose parts. Yeah. It's about the process. Yeah. God, that's, I love that so much. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> and because every day can be something different. Yeah. And there's no right and wrong answer. There's no good and bad. Yeah. It yeah. It is what it is. It just is what it is. And, and right. I think that. When when these kids look back on this, their memory is going to be of being in charge a little bit, mm-hmm. right? Be controlling, almost controlling their own destiny. Well, yes, and they do because they're controlling their play. Mm-hmm. And when you give them an um, iPad, which I know most of our children do use on a regular basis, mm-hmm. typically there's a right and a wrong answer to whatever they're doing, whatever the game is, whatever the interaction is on it. Yeah. There's a right or a wrong. And with loose parts, there's no right and there's no wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's whatever the children come up with at the moment. And I'll be interested to see, this is our first full year, um, I'll be interested to see how the children, how our three-year-olds are as five-year-olds and what growth I see. Oh, with, yeah. If I give them the same gutter and the same hose a year later and then two years later, what sorts of different activities they've imagined for that gutter and that water flowing. And and have you had it for a full year yet? I, when did you get the... I think we started it, it last spring. Okay, so like spring of 2014 and yes. now it's fall of 2015. Yes. Have you noticed changes inside the classroom in terms of how the kids interact or we use a lot of loose parts in the classroom as well oh awesome Um, yeah which is fun um I think because of the way that we are as teachers in our environment again I hate to go back to the word discipline Mm -hmm. but the correcting of children is really not necessary wow Um, if you give them materials that are safe for them to use and that they can maneuver and um, use their imagination and um, manipulate Mm -hmm. they're happy Mm mm-hmm and if you give them enough of it, mm-hmm. enough of the materials, so, you can't have one pot and one pan. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some examples of loose parts in the classroom? Um, tree cookies, we call them, which are little bits of trees um, that we've sliced either branches or big flat parts off stumps we use indoors. We have oh, lots nice. of blocks. Um, I know when parents come to me and say, what loose parts can I have at home? I said, hey, but you already have them. Blocks are loose parts. Lots of different ways to use them. Lots of different ways to manipulate them. Pots and pans are loose parts. Anything that can become something else. Um, I saw, I just saw on a uh, Facebook page, someone had posted a picture of a um, dust buster. I don't remember those little tiny vacuums and I had a blanket over it and the little girl in the picture said shh my baby's sleeping (laughs) (laughs) so she had taken a dust buster it made into a baby and put a blanket over it that's that's something that can be a whole variety of different things so and I think the other part of this is parents and adults have to keep their hands off which means you have to be willing to step back 
and let the children experiment on their own and not try to guide or force the play one way or the other. Just because I think the water should flow downhill because it's coming from a gutter four feet off the ground, the children may have a different idea about that, a different idea of maneuvering the water. And if I put myself into the play, I change the play. So stepping back, which can be really hard, is really important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't want to give them answers. You don't want to give them answers. And what I come up with may be a dumb idea in their mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm 50. They're four. You know? Yeah. yeah. They might see the world differently. Exactly. That's cool. They absolutely hopefully see the world differently. Yeah. I'm hoping they do. And yeah. it's their job to figure things out on their own. And even if I know, and if I'm thinking in my mind, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. I'm not saying that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you mentioned just a minute ago about not having a an end in mind or not having a sort of direction and it's right. making me think especially thinking about indoor loose parts it, what do you think about this trend of like for instance lego or playmobil to have girls lego and boys lego like <laughs> obviously one or the other what what is what is your attitude on that i think that's funny yeah <laughs> <laughs> I understand what Lego Incorporated is going for. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I guess that I would have to reluctantly admit, although I hate it, that perhaps given the choice, the girls may gravitate toward the pink and purple Legos. But I'm hoping that when they come to my loose parts playground, <laughs> that they, doesn't make any they difference. Don't, exactly. Just as many girls are doing one thing as boys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a little bit unfortunate. Now, I also have to be up front and say I only have boys at my house. Yes, me too. Um, yeah. So I only bought one thing. Yeah. Um, and I think Legos are great. And I think, you know, when your child's 11 and, or 8 and starts asking for the directions to make something, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But when they are 3, 4, and 5, if they, you know what, if they can't do it independently, they shouldn't be doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So if your 8-year-old can read and follow the directions and wants to make something specific that he sees in the book, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Short of that, they should be doing their own thing. Because, again, then there's an end result. Yeah. And then uh, I didn't do it right. I put a blue instead of a red in the middle, and I yeah. don't know what to do now. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's... And I, I guess thinking about gender, hard. you could make an argument that more girls will gravitate toward Lego at all if it's pink and purple. I mean, maybe that's... <laughs> Well, I think that's what Lego's hope is, right? Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. started out in, in royal colors, um, primary colors, yeah, and um, has, have obviously jumped on the bandwagon of saying, if I make it pink or purple, maybe I can grab their eyes in the store. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I tell parents, you know, get a, get a set of blocks, wooden blocks, the best blocks you can afford, get balls, get some gutter pieces, yep. um, and yogurt containers, and yep. uh, margarine boxes, and cereal boxes and anything you're going to oh, put yeah. in a recycling bin that doesn't have a sharp edge and your child will be thrilled <laughs> and for goodness sakes don't worry about colors right like just exactly. any every color exactly. you, you won't they won't exactly. they won't mind the one time that i ever had one of my kids mind about color was we, <laughs> we went to a family reunion and we had the choice the four of us of staying in a room that was like six feet by eight feet maybe for all four of us but that was decorated in like <laughs> It was very boy. I mean, it was the the walls were navy blue. The books were the books that they were sort of interested in at the time. Um, there was, I feel like there were stuffed wolves. You know, like not real stuffed mm -hmm. wolves, but like they were just a lot they of were appealing manly to, yes. things. And then, <laughs> or we had the choice of staying in a cavernous room that was pink, purple, with like doll houses a and pink princess room. My, and and I had yeah the pink princess room. And I had I feel like our, our oldest at the time was eight, and he was like, "You can't make me yes. stay in this room. Please don't make me stay in this room." And and uh not interesting yeah so we we did we stayed in the tiny boys room yeah because somehow he saw staying in there as somehow diminishing him I, or um, yeah he just it making was him uncomfortable and at the at, i think soon after that i read a book called cinderella ate my daughter which i just think <laughs> is the best name for a book ever and it had to do with this mom her she's a i can't remember peggy orenstein that's her name and listeners, this is actually on the Fab Five and a Half. So if you if you, you know, want to read some of those books. Oh, we've got children coming into the <laughs> playground. This is awesome. Hi. Long time no see. Hi. Hey. Oh, you going to talk to? <laughs> I haven't seen you in forever. If, if kids want to come and say hello, they I'm certainly can. I'm to the microphone. Isn't that neat, CJ? Because I'm talking to my friend, Miss yeah. Karen. We're having a chat. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Jameson. Hi. Hi, Brendan. There's like, Hi, there's, Patrick. There's probably 20, Hi, 15, Charlie. 20 Hi, kids out here right now. <laughs> and uh, and they're they're kind of looking at us. We're, I've got headphones on. I look really funny. We've each got we this big so microphone. We look so fancy, don't we, Danny? Anybody who wants to come and say hi can certainly do that. So, um, yeah, so I think I feel like 
I, I got it. We got a little bit off track because <laughs> of um, because of the kids coming out. So you know what? It was <laughs> about be distracting. Thank yeah, goodness. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it was about gender, but that's totally not what this playground is about. Yes, anyway. we're not about so, gender. So my point, it, whatever it was, is gone. And what I'm doing right now is I'm watching kids. They just the three kids are now in the boat, and the boat is tipping or not tipping. It's almost like a seesaw that that um, if if enough kids get into it on one side, it's going to move one way. There it goes, and it's and on the other way, the other side. This is. Awesome. Oh, I'm so glad. I feel like we'll get to finish out this interview with kids out here, which is really, really Which is cool. wonderful. And what's better yeah. than the sound of children playing? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing. Um, there's just, there's lots of smiles and um, there actually, there's a kid sitting on a slide and there's another kid who maybe wants to get on that slide, <laughs> but can't because it's only one. But there's, there's like, now there's, I think, 10 kids in the rowboat, two, four, six, eight kids in the rowboat. And oh, this is a delight. Is this, is it, so this move to loose parts. Is it one of your favorite things that you've ever done? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I do lots of great things at our school. Yeah. We do tons of good things. Yeah. What I like best is that we're always growing as adults and teachers. Yep. And I love change. And when I hire people, I'm very clear about that right up front. You know, you're going to be here for 15 years. So if you don't like change, <laughs> you're going to love it. You need yep. to go someplace you're else. You're going to love it so much that you won't want to leave. We're and always coming up with new ideas. We're always growing. Um, yeah. And philosophically tweaking ourselves. Yep, yep. And um, the sluice parts change has certainly been fabulous. Yep, yep. Well, Miss Tanya, Tanya Trainer of <laughs> Miss Tanya's Nursery Schools, I just want to thank you so much oh, for, for taking this time Oh, it's my pleasure. Come back any time. Oh, I would love to. <laughs> I definitely, I, I'm hoping to get a, a picture. And I'm not sure if I can do that now that there's kids in the playground. Like a picture to post, you know, post in the on the podcast page. Yeah, as long as we have sign off from parents, okay, you're cool. more than welcome to take pictures. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. and and maybe I'll return. I don't know. I might I might have to see this playground in snow. Yes, that would be in cool. snow, yes. And you can check us out as I said we're in Bay State Parent Magazine. We had in August the editor came out and did a big article, a big four-page article That's about right. the loose parts right. Which is how I found Took out about it. Took a lot of pictures, so. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's delightful. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you're you. You're welcome.